going on, everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music. Today, I want to talk about this album right here. This is Square Pusher's Ufabulum. I think that's how you say it. Released on Warp Records on March 15th, 2012. Now, after being fairly to somewhat negative about some of the previous Square Pusher albums that I talked about on this channel, I'm so happy to finally talk about a Square Pusher project that not only do I really like, I actually think it's one of the best releases in his catalog. Flaws, warts, and all. So with all that being said, I'm not gonna waste much more time on an introduction. And yeah, let's just get into this guy. Despite being fairly similar in broad strokes to other albums and Square Pusher's catalog, Ufabulum represented a change up in a few things about the Square Pusher persona. For one, it seemed like he desperately wanted to get away from the live instruments meets electronic music sound that he had been playing with and just make a completely electronic focused album, as discussed here in an interview with Clash Magazine. Two, it seemed like he was becoming genuinely uncomfortable with the cult of personality that was forming around the Square Pusher project, as he stated in an interview with the film Eltier. I think that's how you say it. A lot of the visual ideas in the, uh, the show are sort of based on imagery from dreams. A couple of ideas behind the LED helmet. I mean, one of them was that I've always felt a bit uncomfortable as a performer, and as bit, particularly with the idea of being the centre of the attention and this cult of personality thing that springs up around musicians on stage. And that's one of the things I liked about when I started to go in raves in the early 90s, that the crowd wasn't really focused on the DJ. It was more kind of focused on itself and the music. And I found that really refreshing change to the experiences I'd had, you know, early on playing with groups, you know, where, where it was riveted on the band. At the same time, turned me into something other than a human being, if you like. I feel it's like a canvas, like a way of displaying images. And three, if only tangentially related to the whole music of the album, at this point, Square Pusher would go all in on his LED visual setup, both in terms of the helmet that he debuted with the Showbill Leader One project and the full-size backdrop that he would employ in his live setup, which looks pretty neat if you ask me. Overall, the album, despite having an average score better than his previous albums on Metacritic, was once again met with a mixed reception of both positive and negative reviews, with some of calling it a return to form and a proper sequel to Go Plastic, to others calling it boring and predictable. But where do I stand in all this? I do agree with the critical idea that it is a pseudo sequel to Square Pusher's Go Plastic, but only in the sense that on here he's really playing around with that idea that he talked about in an interview with that album that he wanted to move away from more live instrumentation and just go completely electronic, but also play around with the idea of the melody and the drum going in between and swapping out for each other. If you didn't check out the interview that I segmented in my Go Plastic review, I'll put it right here so you can check it out and just get a better sense of, I think, what he was playing around with on this album. Come, I've got fed up with like trying to use uh, live instruments. I'm bored of it, you know, I just sort of want everything to be so brutal and digital because that's ultimately like one of the things that's good about electronic music like you can just do things that are be totally beyond like a pair of hands. Traditional roles of like drums and a bass and a sort of melody thing like making them so that they can actually appear to swap places and stuff you know like almost like the drums becomes the melody or the or the bass becomes the melody or the melody becomes the drums. So the one thing I think that separates this album from Go Plastic is on that album he was really playing around with jungle, drum and bass and two step garage and on here he's actually sort of doubling down on like big room trance, big room EDM, big room dubstep but doing it in a way that is very much square pusher. I really feel like square pusher is honing in on what he does best. Catchy melodies, crazy drums, and a lot of electronic granular destruction. And all the sort of elements that he's played around with on previous albums definitely show up here. And to some degree, you might say that it is derivative, but there is enough, there are enough unique characteristics to the al this album that I think it stands out on its own. It's not the most original sounding Square Pusher album, and 
I guess if you really wanted to be harsh on it, you would say that it's a bit too been there, done that. But I feel like there's still enough new and interesting ideas on here that make it stand out on its own. And I think a lot of it is due to the fact that there's just so many strong melodic components on this album that make it such a joy to go back and listen to. The album starts off fantastically with the track 4001, which rams right out the gate in old school square pusher fashion very similar to like a slowed down come on my selector but halfway through it hits this absolutely amazing hands in the air big room breakdown that features all sorts of these shimmery synths and just great vibes as well as one of the most hard-hitting drum breakdowns that has ever been featured in a square pusher tracks and it's dynamic it's squelchy and it hits you in all all the ways that a frantic square pusher track does when it's at its best. And then from there, the next three tracks are all uniformly excellent. Unreal Square is another early album highlight with its squealing synths, menacing bass line, and furious drums. Not to mention the tempo switch up from the halftime drums that the song starts off with, moving into full speed ahead, typical square pusher drill and bass drums that just really show off that square pusher really still has a strong sense of dynamic when it comes to his productions. Stadium Ice and Energy Wizard are two of the much more pleasant tracks on here that are a bit brighter and more focused on melody and being catchy, but they still have these great dynamic musical shifts to them that keep them from being too repetitive or just too derivative of other Square Pusher tracks. There isn't really that much like sort of uniqueness to sort of go in depth and talk about them, but there's still two really, really cool tracks, and I definitely dig them. Later on, Drax 2 and Dark Steering both go into sort of more familiar, dark, square pusher territory, but ultimately do enough interesting and unique things, whether it's with the way that the, the drum programming gets all glitched out, the way that the melody progresses, or the way that the track progresses, that keeps them from being way too derivative and ultimately become some of my favorite square pusher tracks on here. Specifically, Dark Steering with its neck destroying swing is one of my favorite Square Pusher tracks and I would probably put it in my top 20 of all time. Where the album ultimately falters a little bit for me is that there's just a few too many ho-hum tracks on here that ultimately sort of weigh down my listening experience. Red and Green is an ambient interlude that just goes on for way too long. The Metallurgist and 303 scope them hard sound cool enough but but lack the dynamics of the better moments on this album. They're not really songs that I end up skipping. They're just ultimately songs that really don't stand out to me as much as the better tracks on this album. And finally, the and finally the last track on the album, Electric Shock, isn't bad by any stretch. It's just a little bit too much of Square Pusher throwing every single element that's on this album all into one track. And while it's meant to be this amazing climactic piece, Ultimately, it just becomes a bit too messy and a little bit too unfocused for me to really, truly love this track. It's not bad, and nor are any of the other tracks that I mentioned on here. It just doesn't measure up to the best moments on this album. I should also state that I have the Japanese CD press of this album, which comes with a bonus track called On Crack, and it's nothing to write home about. So at the end of the day, this album is not without its flaws. It is definitely a little bit derivative, but it does doesn't take away from the fact that this is Square Pusher finally sounding inspired after so many tired sounding Square Pusher albums. I am so sorry that I waited so long to listen to it, but I think that time away from listening to his music really did help me in terms of being able to go back and listen to this album with a fresh set of ears. And like I said, I think it's one of Square Pusher's best projects of the 2010s. So with all that being said, yeah, let's get to that tier list. and. As much as I would like to put it in the A, I still think that there are better Square Pusher albums, so it just narrowly misses it, and I think I'm gonna put it in the B tier. With all that being said, as much as I like this album, kind of like the one that he follows this one up with too, and I actually think it's kind of one of Square Pusher's more underappreciated projects, but we'll have to wait to talk about that guy another time. So with all that being said, 
So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you've listened to this album for yourself, please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. If you want to hear this album for yourself, please head over to my WordPress blog, because that's where I'll be posting music links to any of the albums that I talk about on this channel. Make sure you're here on Sundays for Live from the Record Room, my DJ live streams that I do on this channel. There you can hear me play records like the ones that I talk about in these videos, as well as a whole host of other records that I don't get a chance to talk about on this channel. Links to everything, as always, down in the description. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, peace out! <laughs>